Hello guys, it's DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room. I'm here for my April Q&A. Um, there's a few things I want to talk about in this video as well. I haven't written down exactly all the things I want to talk about, which I probably should have done. Uh, but hopefully I don't forget anything. Well, firstly, uh, I just want to say obviously a massive thank you to all of the Patreons that have supported me this month. It has been a little bit of a terrible month in regards to YouTube. You know, all this ad stuff that's going on. Um, you don't think it's going to affect these smaller channels like myself, but then all of a sudden out of the blue, bang, it does. Um, it was quite gutting actually. Um, uh, I spent about three months on my Grand Theft Auto video um, in total. I've read maybe 60, possibly 70 hours on that video from start to finish. And basically uh, everything was all fine up to that. And then this is this, it's a bit different for me. I put the video up and uh, everything was fine. It says it had ads on it, all that sort of thing. Uh, and then I realized one, someone I know, another uh, fairly decent sized YouTuber that basically messaged me and says, you do know there's no ads on your video. Really? I had a look. Uh, it says there is, but there isn't. I have no idea what's going on, but for some strange reason that's happening with all of my videos now. They say they've got ads, but they don't. Um, and in fact, they don't show up for about four or five days. Uh, and as anybody that will know, you get all your views in the first few days, and then it's just little trickles after that. So it's a little bit sad. So I really do appreciate all the support from my patrons. Um, I was very, very close to taking this uh, full time and doing my 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 dream of uh, uh, pushing out more content. The the ultimate plan for Slopes Game Room, in case you are interested is basically to have one big video at the weekend, whether that be a complete history video, random history, um, top 10, whatever it may be, you know, like a really decently well edited, full length, over 10 minutes, uh, possibly all the way up to, like I said, the Grand Theft Auto 150 minute episode um, every weekend. And then during the week, I would have a smaller video, which um, uh, you'll actually be seeing the very first one tomorrow, well, maybe tomorrow, we'll see, whenever the ads show up on it. But, uh, um, what have I called it? Not quack shot, I've called it quick shot. Uh, Slopes Gaming Room Quick Shot. They're little four or five minute episodes about a random piece of history in gaming uh, that don't really fit into any other way that I could put them in a top 10 or whatever. So I just do a quick video talking about something interesting from video game years past. Um, and there'll be a more of a midweek thing. And I also wanted to do uh, once a week streaming, whether that be commentary on something or like I say, just a, an average, a normal stream. But it's all been pushed back, sadly, because YouTube has probably cut me down 60, 70% since uh, Christmas. So it's pretty painful. Um, so uh, I, I don't want anyone to worry. I am going to keep pushing forward. I do feel like if you put the effort in, it will reward you in the end. Um, and that's what I'm going to be doing with Slopes Game Room. I am going to continue to put all of my effort in there. You know, spend all my nights not playing video games, just editing and talking about video games. <laughs> um, which tends to be the case pretty much all the time anyway. Um, so yeah, there's a little update on what's going on behind the scenes of Slopes Game Room. It's not as great as I'd like it, but it's definitely... Um, uh, it's, just, it's just made me change the way I'm going to do things. Uh, the only difference that you're probably going to see is the fact that every, instead of having a video every week, they're just gonna randomly appear. I'm still gonna put out the same amount and if not more content, um, but they'll just be random. So if you are subscribed, I do highly suggest you click that bell uh, that will let you know when new, new videos um, get uploaded. I am gonna try my best to get them up at the weekend, but due to these YouTube ads just going all over the place, no one knows what the hell's going on, they will go up sporadically and as you're a, a, if you are a patron of mine you will obviously see them as soon as they are uploaded probably four or five days before everyone else who knows who knows um, but yes uh, I'll get straight into now after I've given you a little rant and a little update on what's going on with the channel and things that are happening behind the scenes uh, let me give you a, an update on what uh, let me answer some Q&A's that's what I was gonna go on about I'll get straight into it here we go here we go uh, this one is from Chris Heaney, who's apparently my dad. He's not. I hope he's not. Chris Heaney asks, uh, what's your favourite thing to eat and drink while gaming? Junk food, 
Probably. Um, I'm I'm a, 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 a bit of an addict to energy drinks, and that is something I need to be cutting out. And uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be energy drinks. Um, whatever's on offer. I'm not as much of a fan of monster drinks. I think they leave a bit of a syrupy taste in your mouth. I prefer monster uh, and not monster, sorry, relentless and Red Bull drinks. Rockstar maybe. Yeah, I'm a bad, bad energy drinker. And if it's food, I don't know, pizza. Pizza's pretty much my go-to food for anything anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, probably that. Um, yeah, junk food. And uh, that needs to change, that needs to change. Okay, so question number two uh, we have here from Team Not Crash uh, and um, uh, or, or DJ from Team Not Crash. <coughs> and he asks, where do you get your motion backgrounds for your videos? Two, oh, that's number one. Oh, he's asked me a few questions. So number one, where do you get your motion backgrounds for your videos? All over the place, absolutely anywhere and everywhere. I get a lot of free um, free stock footage from YouTube uh, and, and other places. Sometimes I'm just recording one particular thing and I'll blur it out, add some weird effects to it, and then that's your background. People don't even notice what it is, and I just put it in there because it makes the image look a bit nicer. You'll see in my quick shot episode, there's a lot of black and white footage, so I put a border of color around it, and that's just nothing basically. It's just to uh, make it pop out a little bit more at the screen, so th th there is no one answer. Majority of the time it's from YouTube, random free stock footage um, uh, uh, channels and what have you. Number two, I notice you do a lot of collaborative stuff with your boy Guru Larry and even upload on the channel sometimes. Not to mention you even take the time to make a video shouting out cool chan channels you come across. Have you ever thought of making one big collaborative channel featuring content from a bunch of people, sort, sort of like Eruptions um, Arcadia? Yes, I remember when me and Larry first started talking, or when we first started putting stuff together at least, um, we did talk about possibly trying to do some kind of, I don't even know, maybe like retro wear partner thing, where you, uh, or channel awesome type thing. Um, it never got any further than that. Perhaps, I really don't know if there's any kind of call for it. Uh, I mean, I I'll tell you now, doing the amount of work that I do on my channel and the odd occasional thing that I do for Larry's as well, um, uh, uh, I, I am more than full time doing Slopes Game Room as, as a complete job, or just editing as a job. Um, I, um, in actual fact, in case anyone's interested, uh, you'll see about this in the next Q&A, hopefully. Um, I am actually gonna be working with a record label that I have done an unboxing with. You'll see who they are next time. I don't know what I'm allowed to say, what I'm not at the moment, but I'm gonna be doing promotional videos for them, um, for their upcoming records as well. So, I mean, you'll see more about that in time, but what I'm saying is the editing takes up so much time I think it's basically just falling on deaf ears because we just don't have the time to look into it. I mean, Larry's putting out so much more content now than he was the, uh, a year or so ago. Um, and, you know, me and him are both uh, reaping the rewards and, you know, people coming to, more and more people coming to find us. So, um, yeah, that's the reason I don't, I, I, speaking on my behalf, definitely, I think that's the reason we haven't done it. It's just because there's so much effort that, and so much work that needs to go into that that it would probably sadly take away from our own uh, our own jobs, uh, our, our, own, our own jobs, our own YouTube channels and what have you. So that's probably why we didn't do that. And did you say about, let me have a look at this. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the, the shout outs that I'm gonna be doing for other channels, that's going to be a yearly thing still. Uh, I mean, obviously I'll do the odd shout out randomly and point out bits in each other, in, in videos and what have you. Uh, but like the, the history, gaming history source video that I talked about in the previous one, I think it was Double Dragon. Uh, I still will be doing my top 10 uh, YouTubers under 5,000 subscribers once a year. Um, I, my list is actually a little bit short at the moment. I've already got two people down that are definitely going to get shouted out as long as they continue to make content. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's what's going on there and obviously me and Larry uh, are going to continue working together for the foreseeable future, I believe. <laughs> There you go, there you go, there's that one. Very long-winded answer, but quality question, thank you. A lot of people ask me about mine and Larry's relationship, and we are different people, brothers. Right, okay, 
Do you have a dedicated game room? Uh, somewhere to show off your collection? If so, a video tour would be interesting. With your trip to Disneyland being so enjoyable, have you had the urge to continue on your Disney game review videos? Okay, so I'll go from first, do I have a dedicated game room? No. I would love one. I am constantly looking up um, like cabins to put out in the garden, uh, which my wife's not a fan of. Um, I'm constantly wanting to take all the beams out of my attic and turn that into a big game room, which my wife's not a fan of. Um, yeah, it's, at the moment, no. In actual fact, I'm actually, I'm actually a bit of a weird phase with my gaming. The only complete collection, not, not complete, but the only complete collection that I have anymore uh, would be my Dreamcast collection. Uh, maybe 50, 60 games for that. Um, probably a few more actually. The majority of my other collections I have sadly sold. Uh, I still do have some really good, my camera's gonna stop in a minute. Uh, I still have some really good um, uh, Mega Drive games, I have a few Mega CD games, and I mean, I've still got a box 32X and a few things like that. But uh, nowhere really to store them other than in brown boxes in my attic. Eventually I will love to have a nice beautiful setup where I can stand in front of and show off my game collection and all that sort of thing and I would like to one day just start collecting again. I would never go down a route of just buying massive bulks and bulks of games. I would only ever choose the games that I really really uh, uh, want to get. So stuff that really interests me and I think I'm probably going to go towards a PC Engine and Japanese Mega Drive um, collection in time. But that is when we move and I'm talking years away from that yet. Uh, so no, I don't have a massive game collection, although people probably think I do. Um, uh, and I don't have a dedicated game room. I have a little cupboard under the stairs, which is just, just over there. Uh, that I have a nice big shelf just full of gaming, but um, it's not. It's nothing compared to the, the, the stuff you see in other people's videos, other YouTubers, not at all, not at all. Um, yeah, that's what's going on with that. And what was the other question? Uh, oh, I've completely lost the page. Here we go. What's the other question? Oh yes, the Disney videos. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm obviously a massive fan of Disney. Everyone keeps asking where I get this poster from. I found it on Google Images and I reshaped it and re removed it around and removed the imagery and the, the writing around the stuff and I made that half my, well, not half myself. It, I made it so it would fit as a poster size. Um, yes, I do want to continue doing those Disney videos. Like I say, what I would like to do is the big video at the weekend and the smaller video in the week, and perhaps those Disney ones would go in the midweek ones. Um, the problem with it is I've got to Robin Hood, and that's my issue. Um, Robin Hood doesn't technically have any games dedicated to it, and I'm on about a Disney film, Robin Hood. Um, the only thing I can find to do with Robin Hood is a crappy little extra, not even a dedicated level or anything, um, in that Disney Infinity game. So, and, and honestly it's not even one of my favourite films, I, I, I never had it as a kid, I didn't really, I don't massively enjoy it if I'm honest, it's an okay film. Um, so, for me I've just got to get past that Robin Hood l speed bump and then I'm back on full track to continue doing these uh, uh, Disney videos. So. That's where I am with it. Yes, I will continue doing them. Um, yes, I will. I just don't know when. <laughs> I really, really should just pull the band-aid off and get that Robin Hood video done. I really, really should. Um, yeah, that's what's going on. <laughs> uh, question number four. Uh, from Ian A. Chapman. A uh, long-time supporter of the show. Thank you very much. Do you still buy physical copies of media for movies, music and games? Or have you switched to digital ownership or streaming services? I will always, always choose physical where I can. Um, obviously my Steam library is full of maybe 500 odd games and that's not the best example, but um, uh, I generally feel like it feels really bad to me to actually own something physically. I mean, I have, <clears throat> what do I have? I have a Zelda game, um, whatever that cell shaded one was for the GameCube, I can't remember what it is right now, off the top of my head. That Zelda game and, and Wario Touch and Go for the Wii U as digital downloads, and it infuriates me that I don't have the disc. And I don't know why, because nowadays you don't really get much uh, of, a, of a manual or anything really much of games anymore, but I, I just love owning the disc, and uh, as in the, the proper case of everything. 
Uh, recently I've just bought it, it hasn't come through yet, I imported Binding of Isaac just because it's got a nice manual with it, that's like a £45 bringing over from the US or I can go on Steam for £5 a player, which is what I, I, I like owning physical copies. Um, it's the reason I haven't downloaded Wonderboy yet because I really want to own it as a physical copy and although it hasn't been um, uh, announced yet, I'm holding, I'm holding hope. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm all about owning physical. Music-wise, not so much because I'm a DJ and uh, a lot of the music I play is very um, disposable in a sense where I'll play it for a couple of months and I'm probably ever going to listen to it again, you know, with my hardcore electronic EDM type music. Um, uh, but bands that I'm a big, big fan of and I know I'm going to listen to forever, I do buy the albums and as you know, I'm a big vinyl collector of video game soundtracks too. Um, and in regards to movies, I have an enormous uh, Blu-ray, well, enormous, maybe two, three hundred Blu-ray collection. It's not enormous compared to some people. Um, uh, and everyone always asks, why don't you just stream it? Why don't you just stream it instead? You know, Netflix, all that sort of thing. You put a Blu-ray on and they all just shut up. The Blu-ray is always going to look better or 4K will always look better uh, than any kind of streaming that I've ever come across. Um, and that's I, I'm, I'm always going to buy Blu-ray if I can. Absolutely, absolutely. The only thing is I, I tend to buy Blu-rays of films that I've already seen streamed and then never watching them. But you know, that's the stupid stuff that goes on with me. Uh, number five. What's next? What's next? From Andy T. Monaghan. Monaghan. Um, uh, another long-time uh, patron supporter. Thank you very much. Given the growing nostalgic market, particularly within the retro gaming scene, through things like vinyl, kickstarted games on platforms like the original Game Boy to Dreamcast, with games today hovering over the Hollywood movie realism, since we all have our own personal feelings towards the era of gaming we started with, how do you think the current era of games will be remembered? Um, it's so hard, isn't it? Because you think to yourself, I remember when I was a kid, I remember thinking, can games look better than Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive? Yes, they obviously can, you know. Um, but then I look at now, and I'm looking at Uncharted 4, perhaps, or the new um, uh, Horizon game, something like that, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, can they look better than this? They probably can. Yes, they probably can, but I don't know <laughs> um, what they could possibly put in there to make them better. I, I really don't know a good answer for that question. I think maybe streaming services are going to be um, remembered, and maybe they're going to remember, for, for nowadays games, uh, uh, more and more than they are now, at least, with PlayStation Now and what have you. Uh, but I really would like to think that there would sort of be a... I suppose there already is a classic era of gaming, and I suppose in the future that this will be the classic era of gaming. I think this is going to be a lot more uh, uh, presentable. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously talking about the big games, Horizon and stuff like that, will be a lot more fondly remembered. Um, but then again, you don't really hear people talking about a lot of the PlayStation 3. Obviously the big ones and Charted and stuff you do, but... I, I don't know. I'm completely rambling. I'm thinking all this off the top of my head. I didn't pre prep for any of these answers. I don't know the answer to this question. I don't know how people would remember them. People, give me your opinions in the comments below. I honestly don't know. Um, they will be remembered. I don't know if they're going to be that collectible, maybe. I don't think they will be more collect that collectible because streaming is going to be such a, a bigger thing in the future that people will just stream all their games. Uh, and there's, there's, there's enough physical copies. That I, I honestly don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I started to try and give a really good answer then, but I didn't get one. <laughs> you didn't get one. I'm sorry. We finally bring this to our final question. Question number six from Standstill Pictures. Uh, what? Is, oh, there, here we go. Hello, kind sir. I know you did a tele. I know you did television a while back, but did you have training in graphics, video, and audio, or are you just a natural? Ooh. Um, no, I taught everything myself. Uh, and honestly, people uh, ask me, how do you do all that stuff? How do you do all that stuff? I mean, I just show them. Uh, it's a lot of images moving around the screen that I prep before I make the video. Oh, okay, that's actually quite easy. <laughs> you know, uh, And that's it. And uh, over time, you work out how to add shadows. And uh, over time, you work out how to make an image instead of going from do to stop, you know, make it move smoothly across. You, you, you quickly work out that if you cut an image in the middle uh, and then bring in the original image over the top, it all just looks like it's expanding over each other. Little effects that it, over time, I, I know 
50 to 100 effects and I just put them in whenever I feel like it and it just all comes together into a, a slope, slopes game room style that people tend to really, really enjoy and it's just very easy. Um, uh, obviously it's easy for me because I do it daily, but um, it's just stuff that you learn over time. I used to use uh, an audio uh, bit of equipment called Sony uh, Acid Pro to do a lot of my remixes, mashups and stuff, or when I'd play live and I used to do a couple of like weird cut and paste mixtapes on there. And moving from uh, Acid Pro to Sony Vegas, after using Acid Pro for about two or three years and working out how to do different things and chop bits up and move them together and expand and what have you. Um, moving from that over to Sony Vegas, it was an easy transition. It's, it's the same company and they're, very, they're laid out incredibly similar, but now instead of it just being audio, there's a little video layer as well. So I just got to work out how to do the video layer just the same way I do an audio layer. And if you already know how to do the audio layer, the video layer comes quite naturally. Um, but, so yeah, long story short, it's about five or six years of messing around with similar programs and just working out bits as you go along. I'm sure if you go back and look at my very first episode, the story of Roland, uh, or Roland the Forgotten Mascot, I think I changed the name to, uh, you'll see that um, I, I personally thought I've come along quite a long way. <laughs> I've come along quite far with the way I edit my videos. But that's what you get when you edit daily, literally daily. Um, yes, we are at the end of the question. Oh, we need to about my TV. In case you guys didn't know, I was a member of a T. I I was a, a guy in a TV show called The Human Guinea Pigs. YouTube it, and uh, I look forward to your unsubscribe when you realise the sort of stuff I used to do. Ah. Um, thank you very much, guys. It's been a, it has been, in regards to views and subs, it's been a fantastic month for the channel. Uh, obviously, thank you all to my Patreons for helping me out this month. Um, in, in this crazy YouTube just threw a massive bomb on me in the middle of the month. <laughs> Um, so I really do appreciate the support. Uh, Patreon, Patreons, you are going to see a few uh, upgrades behind the scene. You're going to see things. I'm starting to look into Discord a little bit. I'm. Um, what else am I doing? Uh, uh, you're going to see a lot of stuff early. Uh, I always try and get them out early, but now you're you're definitely going to see them early because it's the way I've got to go with my channel. Um, and uh, yeah, for everybody else, hopefully uh, you enjoyed what I have coming up. I am working on a couple of big complete history and a couple of obscure complete histories. Like I say, you've got my first ever quick shot episode coming up tomorrow. Um, not tomorrow, well, whenever that goes live. Um, that's literally rendering behind, uh, behind the camera as we speak. Um, what else? What else? Uh, a couple of vinyl unboxings I've already um, done. I just need to edit them up and you'll see them probably spread out throughout the month at some point. Uh, a couple of quality new companies I've never worked with, actually. Um, and... Oh yes, keep an eye on my second channel, uh, Slope Extra. Um, there'll be a link in the description for that. You will be able to see uh, some of these weird promotional things that I'm doing uh, for this other record label. Uh, and finally, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, oh yes, the hat. Not this particular one, uh, is in my shop. Yes, I have, I have a clothes shop thing. Go and find it and uh, yeah, Slope's Game Room hats are in there if you're interested. Um, <laughs> anyway guys, that's it from me. This is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully I'll see you all next time. I bet that's really cold now.